Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Bull versus Bear webinar here. Steve Mally on the call for Trade Day on Tuesday, the 26th of April. Um, we're going to do a bit of a whistle stop tour um, around the markets today, um, kind of slightly time limited, um, but we'll get through everything we need to get through. So I'm going to kick off with the calendar because the earnings calendar, I think, is the most important thing we've got going on today. Um, so if we look for today, um, it, this doesn't come until after the bell, right? So uh, Microsoft and then Alphabet, aka Google. Um, coming after the bell, but nevertheless, uh, markets. Um, you know, if you're, you know, well, you, you know, guys, you know, you have to, you know, you have to close out your positions, but you know, um, you do have that kind of that um, hour post bell before you close them out. So, uh, watching out for that at the end of the day. Okay, uh, we also have had, we've also had PepsiCo already today, um, beating expectations. Um, and most in here, you know, you, you beat um, on most, but, you know, further down the, the line in here, not so important. General Electric uh, beating expectations, but really the focus on Microsoft and Alphabet today. On the macro calendar, durable goods orders, we've got them in just under one hour. Um, and so that they're not, you know, top top line um, and not been moving markets too much in here. Obviously, a big focus on inflation data we have it towards the end of the week. PCE data more important. Uh, we're really now, um, but global um, the core durable goods orders uh, certainly need to watch those at one thirty. That's UK time. Um, we are at um, then excuse me eight thirty uh, Eastern. Okay, so. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're watching out for those um, coming out um, in just under one hour. They're going to be the main focus in here for the day. We also have the API weekly crude oil stock at 4.30 uh, Eastern time. Um, if you're trading oil, obviously, that's going to be important. Keep an eye on that. A uh, little recap from yesterday. Nasdaq ends sharply higher after Twitter agrees to be bought by Musk. Now, this wasn't the market. It was already rallied before this came out, okay? Um, the market already rallied, rebounded strongly, having had a really negative start, really bad into last week. A negative start because of concerns around China. China, Asian stock indices uh, were lower on Monday um, on the overnight uh, it fall. Um, and then we saw European stock indices going even lower. And then we saw um, a really strong intraday turnaround rebound in here yesterday. And that was partly um, helped by um, Musk buying Twitter, um, agreeing to buy Twitter, uh, or Twitter agreeing for Musk to buy Twitter, but um, was also driven higher prior to that. Okay, We saw a solid rebound prior to that. And I think it's really important to note that. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit more when I get to the charts and the technicals. Let's go through Bloomberg's five things to start your day in here. Um, so Musk agreeing to buy Twitter. OK, we've already seen that um, um, serious threat of a nuclear war um, over Ukraine. Um, Sergei Lavrov in here, the Russian foreign minister stating. <coughs> also, so Kremlin is willing to talk to the US. So uh, that's maybe a positive there. Um, and then what else we have in here? Value stocks um, in a survey in here. Value stocks are going to potentially outperform growth stocks. Um, in 2022, um, and bearing in mind that since the global financial crisis, growth has outperformed value. Um, European stocks higher in here um, helped, one, by the fact that they're playing catch up with this strong rally that we saw late in the session in here um, in the US. Um, obviously, with European stock indices, stock markets closed. Um, from like the middle to, to the early afternoon, the US day. And then we also seen in here, um, China pledged to boost monetary policy pool for its COVID hit economy. On that note in here, look, fears of yet more inflation, how market as China tackles COVID. So China's got, um, you know, very much a, a, zero, a COVID zero policy in here, causing stress to global supply chains, further stress to global chains, potentially, you know, that's what we, the, the sell-off we saw early on Monday um, and partly from last week, concerns about, um, uh, further lockdowns in China um, impacting onto um, supply chains and then driving prices higher um, and then potentially pushing them a more hawkish tone from uh, global central banks. OK, so um, real concerns about that. Back to fighting. So your day coming up in here, we already mentioned durable goods orders in here. Um, and then also the um, after the bell, Alphabet and Microsoft are going to be the um, key to the keys to watch. Uh, we already spoke about China there. So U.S. indices uh, this morning slightly slipping, slightly lower um, with big tech earnings in folks. We know that Chinese central bank vows help as COVID lockdowns, lockdowns sap growth. So, yeah, we've had this kind of um, I haven't actually seen anything concrete on that. I don't think there is. But. Uh, basically a, a commitment. Um, so China boost, here we are. I'm trying to pledge to boost monetary. Yeah, so just a pledge to boost monetary policy, okay, um, to, to stimulate the Chinese economy. 
Um, so, um, yeah, but nothing really um, anything more than that. So, but nevertheless, that should be um, a positive for stocks. Um, and oil fluctuates, investors weigh China's COVID 19 resurgence. So, obviously, um, a, a negative, uh, you know, China slowdown would equal. Um, a lockdown, China slowdown would equal then falling global growth, potential higher inflation, um, and then seen as negative for oil. Um, let's have a look what we got going on this morning then. So we're up about a percent, but this is most in Europe, and this is mostly though paying catch up from yesterday. Okay, paying catch up with US stocks because we look at US stock index futures having had a you know a strong day yesterday, and the big the, the important thing yesterday was that turnaround, right? The big sell off coming at a big sell off Thursday through Friday last week, a big sell off to start the day, and then the US came in and bought it, yeah, and that buying came ahead of uh, Twitter that was we were already rebounding pre the Musk Twitter announcement. But we have given up some of those gains already in here this morning um, with uh, markets down around half a percent on the futures. The futures market's pointing half a percent lower going into today. So um, not a massive concern, but a little bit of a concern there with that dip back lower. And again, in here with oil falls, demand concerns, we've already mentioned that. And then Reuters also carries shares, fragile dollar source. The, the, the big um, obvious trend has been ongoing dollar strength. You know, initially we saw dollar strength over the last week or two um, on the back of um, a more hawkish, uh, increasingly, increasingly, increasingly more hawkish Fed. And we see that a more hawkish Fed here, you know, no better place than here. Look, not only now nailed on for uh, 50 basis points, you know, but now we're almost nailing on a number 74. I think this is peak hawkishness, in my opinion, right? So we look, we're currently 25 to 50. This is pricing in 150 to 175. That's up 125, right? So up 125. We're pricing in a 50 and a 75. And then we're basically nailed on to 50. They're, they're not nailing, put, putting any chance of a 75 in here. So it's basically saying we're going to get a 75 basis point hike in here. I don't see that. I don't see, you know, there's been, it's only been the, the Uber hawks in the um, Fed who have even hinted at that, right? I don't see this coming. I think the market's getting way, way, way ahead of itself on what it's pricing in. If we go out to the July meeting now in here, so we're currently 25 to 50, it's nailing on now 100. And so basically, yeah, 175 basis points. So they're basically talking at 50, 75, 50. Yeah, 50, 75, 50. Very aggressive, yeah, by the time we get to uh, in three meetings time. So um, I think we're at peak hawkishness right now. And uh, that yesterday, in my opinion, you can nail this one down. You can call me out on it if you want, guys. Send me an email. I think there's a, I'm going to say a 60 to 65% chance that yesterday's low was the low of this whole bear market, or this, not bear market, this bear move that we've seen in here with stocks through the beginning of this year. I'm going to call it, a, I'm going to go up to 70%. I think it's a 70% chance that the low is now in, that we've put the low in, okay, on the on the major US and European stock indices, and we're going to see upside from here because I think we've hit peak hawkishness. Right. Um, on that note, let's take a look. Yeah, and they say the dollar's king. The dollar initially rallying. OK, I'm going to quickly go to start with the dollar. We don't often look at the dollar index that much. But, you know, the dollar initially rallying. Right. So this rally in here through well, much of this year, then this more celebrated rally, I'd say, in here from the beginning of April has been as the Fed have gone more and more and more and more hawkish and the most hawkish central bank on the planet. And 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 because of that, you know, the dollar's king, you know, higher interest rates attract, you know, attract. Um, attract funds so the dollar's getting bid on that this last move in here at the end of last week and yesterday yeah this is a risk off move because at that point if we go and take a look i'm going to have to jump across to my other tab if we go and look at treasuries and i know it's the differential but treasuries this is lower prices higher yield so the correlation in here this move here cor correlates with lower price bond prices higher bond yields higher uh, dollar okay but look the moving here so this is uh friday then monday tuesday yeah it's been higher prices lower yields but we still see the dollar go higher and so the dollar's now getting a bid in here this last part this last part of the bid comes from uh, a, a risk off scenario the dollar seen as the ultimate um, risk off currency at the moment. It's outstripping the yen. They don't want to own the yen, right? Dollar yen um, is 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 been um, you know the yen is um, on its knees. The yen um, at multi decade lows, and so hence um, dollar yen in here. Um, no one's buying the yen, you know. In this risk off, the shift to risk off that we saw at the end of last week and on Monday morning because of global growth concerns, because of China, right? Um, not because of the Fed necessarily, because of China. 
um, that has seen the dollar continue to rally. Um, we have had a dip this morning, you know, in dollar yen um, and a slight dip yesterday, but it's only a slight dip. So the yen has done a little better over the last, to say, I'd say 12 to 24 hours, but only slightly better. It's pretty much sideways in here, having lost a lot of ground. So, yeah, dollar king at the moment, um, both from a, a, as a safe haven currency, but also as the currency of the, the most aggressive hawkish, the most aggressive most hawkish central bank um, on the planet. OK, right. Whilst I'm on this tab, I'm going to take a look at gold and oil, first of all. So in here we spoke about that dollar strength seeing um um uh, gold weaken okay even though we're risk off and gold is seen as a risk as a safe haven we've seen this kind of fake out breakout in here to the upside and then the market significantly lowers the dollars screamed higher and you know yesterday we were down here somewhere when we came on the call i was like well it's down a lot already but i'd still want to be sure well we almost hit the low over here okay we just held above that low we've had a slight bounce from here i think probably a sell opportunity on gold if we step into the one hour chart there's a rebound if this fades back low as this starts to roll back lower i'd be happy to be short in gold okay and we're not dissimilar on oil in here so oil spiked down lower kind of back within the range we did get a rebound kind of hesitant today do we go into the one hour chart on oil well oil's trying to form a base actually you would argue you do have this down trend line the market's still below this right still way below this but you know if we can get back above this high here the overnight high then it looks positive so i say slightly more bullish for oil so slightly more bullish on oil you know if if you clear that high there uh that is 99.82 so back above 100 bucks oil all of a sudden starts to look uh quite bullish again um so potentially playing that one from the long side let's take a look at the stock indices i think these dips in the stock indices uh, provide a buy opportunity so we'll start with the s p 500 strong hammer pattern strong hammer pattern we've seen it across all the indices european indices put them in as well hammer pattern not as great a hammer pattern here on nasdaq okay but going back to the SP, strong hammer pattern we're dipping lower in here this morning i'm going to step into the one hour chart i think that's a buy opportunity somewhere in here today is going to be a buy opportunity maybe right off the bat you're going to be short okay but i think we're going to turn in here and you're looking then for the counter trend line in here okay i'll be zooming in now on to like even like as little as a five minute chart there's the counter trend of the setback, okay? Looking for one of these trend lines here, something like this through here, whatever works, yeah, probably the, that one there. You've got another, you could, another one arguably through here. Up through here, I'd be happy to be long, certainly up through that peak there. That little peak there is at 42.88 uh, and a quarter, okay? But certainly if it breaks up through this, this, this little counter trend line, I'd be happy to be um, going long in here, okay? Um, at the moment, obviously, we're setting back. You know, if it breaks lower, you can be short as well. I'm not saying you can't be short. We've got lower low. If you start breaking through this low here, or certainly the overnight low, then it all looks a bit negative, okay? However, for me, it's a five-minute chart, remember. Um, I'll be playing this from, the, from looking to buy into this at some point. Um, similar story in here. I'm just going to switch that back to a, like a one-hour chart or something. Um, a similar story for the NASDAQ. So here we are on the NASDAQ um so strong is hammer pattern indecisive this morning slight setback this morning stepping into the one hour chart there's the setback this morning there's a strong rebound in here um if we just look at the this this latest down move in here okay you can see you reverse that down trend line right we reversed that yesterday this one so this is the sell-off from what's that's from thursday friday right this is the thursday friday sell-off thursday through monday sell-off sorry reverse that down trend line took out some dow theories resistance here so you put a base in obviously it's looking a little bit wobbly again stepping in all the way into five minute okay yeah we had this impulsive move in the last five minutes but looking to form a base in it again in here i'd have one of these you know this one's not going to be much to use to us this one that runs along here That one's not much use, but then if we use this down through here, up through here, look, you got double touch there, you got or drill off here, touch, touch, moves away, moves away, moves away, up through there. So up through the recent peak and would also reverse the trend line. Recent peak uh, for the last 10, 15 minutes, full, uh, 13, 49275. So back up through here. 13,492, 13,495. Certainly if it gets about 13,500 in here, this is looking bullish again for me. OK, so I'm preferring edging towards paying them from the long side on the indices today. But if it breaks down through here, breaks down certainly through the overnight low, you're bearish. 
All right, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Sorry for the little bit speedy execution of the webinar today, but I do have a, a commitment. Um, I'm going to wish you all a great trading day. Stay safe out there. I'll be back with you and have a bull vested bear webinar tomorrow. Take care.